Welcome to Asian Pacific America. Thanks for joining us. I'm Robert Honda, your host for our show here on NBC Bay Area and Cozy TV. Today, the challenges and achievements of young adults and children. First, a Bay Area highlight, the Tech Challenge. It is a signature program of the Tech Museum of Innovation that gives some of our brightest youngsters a chance to shine in a friendly but competitive design challenge. We'll hear from some of them as they get ready to build a structure that will stand up to an earthquake. Next, the Silicon Valley Children's Fund, a very unique and important program that helps foster youth and also tries to make sure they aspire and succeed in higher education. Then the March of Dimes is one of the most significant programs ever for the research and support of babies. We catch up with what it has accomplished and what it is still striving to do for all families now. And it is always fun and I always learn something new when interacting with the Children's Discovery Museum. Today the museum comes to us as we continue our holiday celebration with a look at their exhibition and event, Voyage to Vietnam, celebrating the Tet Festival and Children of the Dragon, all coming up later on our show. I'm not sure our first guest will be too impressed with my old science project, changing the color of liquid by combining chemicals. That would not get me on this team. A team getting ready to compete in this year's Tech Challenge, put on by the Tech Museum of Innovation of San Jose. Joining me to talk about this year's competition is Abby Langhor, the Tech Challenge Program Director, and also with us some members of the team, the Rubble Rousers. Uh, seventh grader Addison Rankin, seventh grader Anjali Huang, and seventh grader Alden Liu. Thank you all for being here. Hey. Obviously, the Rubble Rousers is a good name for a team competing <laughs> in this year's event. Give us a little overview of the Tech Challenge itself as well as this year's event. So the Tech Challenge is a signature program of the Tech Museum of Innovation and the way it works is students work in teams of two to six and um, they build a solution to a real world problem. So this year they're working on earthquake safe building. They need to build um, a six foot tall structure that can survive three earthquakes and um, they have to incorporate live load and meet certain rules and um, and then we'll be testing them on April 25th and 26th to see how they've done. A pretty good Bay Area topic too. Yeah, huh? definitely. <laughs> Anybody here competed in the Tech Challenge? before? Allison, give me an idea here in terms of uh, what is something, maybe some advice that you give to people who are competing in it for the first time? You have to start early because if you start only a month or two before the competition, you won't have time to test your design and see what problems you have and fix them. Do you feel more experienced, a little bit more confident this year? Yeah. I've done it the last two years, so this is my third year doing it. How about you, Angela? What are you looking forward to in this contest? And also, what is your sort of role within this project? Well, um, th my role within this project, I'm, uh, I'm going to be helping with all the designs and drawings for our design notebook. And I'm looking forward to actually seeing what happens with our building this year. How, when did you start de trying to design it? Uh, we started late October, I believe, mm -hmm. or mi uh, early November, somewhere around there. How about you, Alden? What do you, uh, what's your role here on this team? Um, my role is safety officer. I, at the test trials, um, I have to make sure that our entire team is going through the safety guidelines and staying safe. What has been maybe the biggest obstacle for you right away? What was the first thing that you had to tackle? Um, probably, like, having our team stay inside the safe area. Angelie, how competitive is this? Uh, do you feel a lot of pressure from this event coming up? I called oh. it friendly, but I, I, I assume it is. Well, it's sort, it's sort of pressuring, but when you get, well, I've heard from Addison and our other teammate who's been actually doing the competition, I've heard that it's a really friendly environment and that it's just fun. Addison, when you get in there, what exactly is the first thing? How, what do you have to kind of, is there distractions to deal with or how, what do you have to do when you first get started? Well, you first have to check in with them and they give you a t-shirt every year with the theme of the um, topic mm -hmm. or the challenge. And then usually our team, the devices, we have to set them up somehow. Like last year we had to screw the um, windmill blades onto the actual device because it wouldn't fit in our car otherwise mm -hmm. after that you go into this corridor where you wait till your team is called up and then you go to the first interview where they ask you questions about your notebook and then there's another interview where they ask you questions about your design 
and then you wait to be called up to the actual performance area. I guess I mean, in a way, I guess it's to make sure that everybody kind of carries their weight, everybody knows exactly what they're doing, as opposed to just being on the team, right? Definitely, and the judges are really looking to see that the whole team has been engaged and that they've really worked collaboratively. That's one of the things that we hear from students year after year is that they really learn teamwork and uh -huh. collaboration, and um, so that's their opportunity to show their amazing process and what they've created. Angelie, how does the team kind of form? Do you guys talk and see who Who's good at what, or does everybody sort of pitch in equally in all areas? Uh, well, we sort of uh, see who's good at what, and then we do what we're supposed to do, what we're good at. If we're not specifically good at something, for example, I and me and Addison are the only people who can use the drill press, so no one else actually uses the drill press but us. And there's this other team member named Chin who can use the hole puncher most efficiently. Mm -hmm. So that's so he hole punches <laughs> through <laughs> our stuff. Uh, it sounds like the hole punching is not a big deal, but it's actually these thick corrugated plastic sheets. So he's the only one that can do it without hurting himself. Uh, so uh, Alden, there's a lot of pressure there to pull your weight in this kind of team. Um, yeah, because it's like very hard and pressuring. So, are you confident about the team, Addison? Um, yeah, I think we'll do pretty well. I don't know how well, but I, our, <laughs> our motto is to not have any regrets when we're done. Okay, Angela, by the way, what is the, uh, the slogan that's behind the t-shirts? We're not it, able to show it, but what's yeah. it say? It says, we solve worldwide problems. Ah, very good, okay. Well, good luck in the competition. Sounds to me like you've assembled a good team here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, again, the uh, Tech Challenge uh, will be taking place uh, coming up on um, a number of different days, but the final event days are Saturday, April 25th for the 4th grade to 6th graders, as well as the high school division. And Sunday, April 26th will be the for the 7th and 8th grade division. I'm wishing everyone the best, but I will be pulling for the Rumble Rousers. <laughs> Coming up, the Silicon Valley Children's Fund, how it's helping foster youth achieve their potential in college. So stay with us. The redesign